Hello everyone, welcome to this video titled Partial Reconfiguration in Ultra Cyclone VSOC. I'm Muhammad Sadri and this is part one of a series of videos that I'm creating uh, about partial reconfiguration in Ultra devices. The techniques that I'm going to show you here, they are not necessarily uh, for Cyclone V SOC. You can use them in I would say any Cyclone V device and even the rest of the, the devices that Altera is producing. So the reason I'm creating this video is that I have seen there's a lot of theory about partial re reconfiguration. Especially from Altera I have seen a lot of presentations that we can do partial reconfiguration. But uh, I have never seen uh, someone doing this in action. So this is why I'm creating this video. And the documentation which is coming from Altera or the examples, they are mostly for the Stratix device, which is their high-end device. And um, they are not for Cyclone. And actually the story is different when you are doing partial reconfiguration for Cyclone. So what I'm going to show you I'm going to show you practically how we do partial reconfiguration with this device, how we create the project, how we manage our files, how we manage revisions, how we manage our partitions in the design, how do we define the logic or lock regions and so on. So everything from the practical perspective and then for the theory actually there are a lot of documentation and there are courses you can study and see the basic idea behind below partial rec reconfiguration so the big picture uh, for what we are doing going to do in this series of videos is that in this video I'm going to show you how you create a project which contains modules and the modules have different personas or different implementations and how we manage to produce different partial beta streams for different personas of each module. Okay, so I show every everything in detail using the Quartus software, and then I for the test I use the JTAG interface to program each of these modules with their own partial beta streams. So, for actually programming the partial beta streams in this video I will use JTAG but then the desired part is that you be able to do this reconfiguration not using the JTAG but using the ARM host which is located inside your uh, Cyclone SOC device or using a NEOS microprocessor or using a dedicated state machine so Another video I will create in future and I will show you how you can transfer actually this partial beta streams from a SD card, from network or anywhere, any storage to your ARM host and then from the ARM host to the partial reconfiguration block inside your FPGA fabric to program a specific part of your FPGA. So this is the second video I will create and this is the focus point of our current video and for our current video the target device as I told you is Ultra Cyclone V Cyclone 5 device and the, the board is the cool Terrasic uh, sock kit uh, which is a low cost board uh, for Ultra Cyclone V and in terms of features it's exceptional so this is a very nice board for in fact experimenting this device because uh, you have dedicated DRAMs uh, for both of the ARM subsystem and also the FPGA and you have high-speed serial interfaces and you have all of these um, in a low-cost board of I would say $300 which, which is really cool and um, if we compare this to the Zinc device, maybe we can say here we are getting a, in terms of performance per price, we are getting a better performance per price in comparison with similar Zinc boards. Okay, that needs a separate video to compare this device directly with the Zinc. So, 
Um, here is one important note related to this video. If you are using this video to learn um, how you should uh, do partial reconfiguration for these devices, I want to note that um, uh, actually one part of this video I will intentionally um, create privately so it's only available for people who do the donation so if you want the whole video um, please go to this address and please make a fair amount of donation and then I will share with you the um, second part of this video in which I describe um, the HDL source of the design in detail okay so by making the donation you will have access to the HDL source code of the entire project and also you will have access to a movie which describes the HDL source code in detail and how the HDL source code should be added to the project so the version I put on YouTube does not contain this part it has taken a large number of hours of work to prepare this video and um, so there are two references that you can actually use uh, to learn uh, the procedure related to partial reconfiguration for ultra devices and here is the first reference um, this is a uh, ultra handbook for Quartus software and um, this is um, the current specific document that I'm showing to you this is Quartus Prime standard edition handbook and um, always in chapter 4 you will find design planning for partial reconfiguration uh, which is a chapter which tries to give you details on how the partial reconfiguration should be done and well as I told you the documentation is mainly for a Stratix device it's not for Cyclone but this is a very good reference and then another um, essential reference that you need to use for doing partial reconfiguration is this one this is actually a document related to the partial reconfiguration IP core of Altera and um, this talks about the inputs and outputs of the partial reconfiguration IP core and how it operates okay so this is another important document that you should use as the reference so what are we going to do in this video is sketched in this very simple block diagram of our system so we are going to implement a very simple system this is our FPGA fabric for now for this video I, I, I don't use the ARM subsystem so we are focusing only on the FPGA fabric and our FPGA fabric contains two sub modules um, and these sub modules practically are of the same type okay they are they have the same implementation um, so I have two instances of this blinker module instance one instance two and I have the whole design and I have three LEDs on my board and the entire thing which is happening is that these modules and my whole design is responsible for turning off and turning on these LEDs sequentially okay so here I have my top level design my top level design contains obviously the logic that I need to perform partial reconfiguration then later on the later video this logic will be connected to the ARM subsystem but for now this logic is only connected to the JTAG and then the top level also contains a small circuit a small circuit which um, blinks one of the LEDs continuously okay at this fixed rate and then inside the top module we have uh, instantiated two times one blinker module which is responsible for creating a pulse on its output the pulse is connected to a LED and so the LED gets turned on and off continuously for the blinker module I have three implementations okay and I, I would call these implementations persona 1 persona 2 and persona 3 so it has three personas and in each of these three implementations the speed at which the, the LED is get, getting on and off is changed okay so persona 1 will uh, blink the LED at the same rate 
as this static design that we have here. Persona 2 will blink the LED at half the rate that we have here and Persona 3 will blink the LED at half half the rate that we have here okay so these are two areas uh, or I would say two partitions of my design that I want to do partial reconfiguration on them so each time I can program each of these areas while the rest of the system is operating I can program each of these areas to operate using either persona 1 or persona 2 or persona 3 and I can do this for each of these guys independently for example I can partially program this area to act or to implement or to run persona 2 and I can partially program this blinker instance 2 to implement or to act as persona 3 okay so in a normal design if I instantiate one block two times then the operation of these two blocks will be completely the same okay so for example if I use person of one for my module and I have instantiated this module two times then I, I would get a complete beta stream for the design and this beta stream will contain this logic and for both of these guys persona one logic okay so this is this is a normal design and then I would have a second beta stream in which we have this logic and for both of the modules we have persona two and then we will have a third design that contains this logic and for both of the modules persona three so when you are not using partial reconfiguration the frequency at which the led 2 and led 3 are blinking is always the same but partial reconfiguration allows us to program either one of these personas independent of the other module partially into the design okay so this is the advantage of partial, partial reconfiguration so in partial reconfiguration I have a module and I can define different personas for this module and then I can program that a specific region in my FPGA using any of these personas independent of the rest of the logic okay and this is uh, what I'm going to show you how you perform this operation how you define these different personas how does your project look like inside the Quartus software and then how you program each of these personas into your partially reconfigurable regions using the JTAG interface and then in a future video I will show you how we will do that using the in fact ARM subsystem so one important note is that for this video I'm going to use a uh, Quartus version 13.1 um, although this is not the latest version the latest version at the time of recording this video is 15.1 which is Quartus Prime and uh, the reason for that is that partial reconfiguration needs a, a separate license so uh, you should uh, you should have access to the license to use it and for now the version of the Quartus that I have access to its um, partial reconfiguration license is 13.1 so I will do everything with 13.1 and as we go through the video I will at each step I will tell you what is different between 13.1 and 15.1 when you want to do the partial reconfiguration actually they are very similar okay they are very sim similar so we start with uh, Quartus software we create I create a project and the project um, is empty I go ahead I add the HDL files and then I describe how we should create and we should manage the files and we should create this project step by step 